Hey, what's up everyone, Bennett Profixer, and today on the channel, we have an iPhone 6S with a charging issue. This particular one came in and the customer said it became more difficult and difficult to charge it until just one day it stopped charging. So we're gonna go through a few diagnostic steps and fix it. And we think it might be a little tiny chip called TriStar. Everything in my workbench is linked up in the description below. So be sure to check that out. And also don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Also like this video and please comment below what you'd like to see in future videos. Without further ado, let's get started on this iPhone 6S with charging issues. Here in front of me on the bench, I have an iPhone 6S that came in for charging issues. Customers said it was very difficult to charge over time, and so they brought it to us because it eventually stopped charging. I have my SmartMod Pro TriStar tester that we're gonna plug into the bottom and see what it tells us. So this particular tester is pretty cool. It's gonna be able to tell us some of the different um, readings that come out of the charge port because it tests the individual lines of the internal part of the charge port. And then it compares those with known goods in order to determine if the lines are within tolerance or not, and then it gives a pass and fail reading. It's not 100% foolproof, however, it's incredibly accurate and I've only had a few rare cases where it's given me an inaccurate reading. So whatever the results tell us right now, it most likely is gonna be that. This is a really great device to use, especially when weeding out the devices as they become checked into your store. You can check them in and test them right there in front of the customer to give a pass and fail in order to let the customer know if it may have other deeper issues than just something like a screen or just something like a simple charge port, which is incredibly convenient. And this is a perfect device for that. I do have this device pulled apart. However, you don't need to pull your device apart in order to use the SmartMod Pro TriStar tester. One of the things to note is if your TriStar is good, it's probably gonna be a pretty quick result. It's probably gonna give it to you within 30 seconds. If it is bad, it's probably gonna take two to three minutes because it has to read all of those lines and compare them with known goods. In the worst condition the line, the harder it is to read, or at least that's what I think, because it does take longer to give the actual results. All right, so the 6S is finally done reading. Um, we actually cut the video because it was taking quite a bit of time. It was probably about two or three minutes. So just imagine that amount of time, that's how long it took for this TriStar test to come back. And it came back as a failed result. So if we click on more, we can then see a couple different results um, as far as each line that was tested. All of them but one tested as bad. And so this would probably indicate that the TriStar is at fault. The TriStar is a very tiny chip. I actually have about eight of them right here in my hand. So as you can see, they're extremely tiny. Another way that we can test this is by using the multimeter. Um, both of these different types of tests, I do have other more detailed videos in the description. So we have one covering the SmartMod Pro TriStar tester, a little more in depth with a couple different devices. And we do have one with the multimeter where we go a little more in depth on how to test your TriStar than I will in this particular video. To test it with a multimeter, you do wanna have a charge cord plugged in, just a standard charge cord, and you will have to open up the device in order to do this. As opposed with the SmartMod Pro, you can all leave it closed. Um, unplug your battery, plug a, a charger cord into the charge port, and then go ahead and touch ground, and then touch your farthest left pin, and it will give you a reading as far as how much power is going to this particular um, point on the motherboard inside the charge port or inside the battery FPC. As we can see, we're getting right about half a volt, which is well under the amount that it should get. It should get closer to three and a half or higher as far as everything that's pulling into the device. It should get right about 3.8 or so, 3.9, um, almost all the way up to four. So that is the results that we're looking for and we're not getting those. So between the SmartMod Pro TriStar tester, we can see that this read bad and then also our multimeter is reading bad as well. So this one right here, I would definitely say is a very clear TriStar issue. So I'm gonna take this one over to the solder bench and then I'm going to remove the TriStar and replace it with a new one. And then we're gonna come right back to the bench and test it once more to see if it's actually gonna charge. So let's do that now. Here in front of me on the bench, I have the iPhone 6S with a bad TriStar. Um, so what we're gonna do is on the back side of the motherboard here, we're gonna peel off this little sticker. Um, peeling it off is gonna reveal uh, the ICs that we need to take a look at. And interestingly enough, Apple actually installed this particular one underneath a little shield there. So we're gonna go ahead and take our little cutters and we're going to lift that up so that we can access underneath there. Uh, that should be enough to be able to get us in. And now we should be able to just replace this TriStar pretty easily. This particular TriStar that's on here um, 
is most likely bad. Depending on the chip that you're working with, it could be that the actual IC has gone bad, or it could be that the solder ball joints underneath have gone bad. In a situation where TriStar is not working properly, it's never going to be the actual solder joints, it's going to be just the IC itself. So with one of these, you want to pull it off, discard it, and then replace it with a brand new IC. So we need a little bit of hot air on this one. There we go. And as we can see, this particular variation of the TriStar is an A1610A3. We're replacing it with the same exact revision of TriStar to ensure that compatibility is 100%. Before we place our new IC on, I'm going to add a little bit of flux, which is going to shield our solder joints from any of this running oxygen. Then I'm going to take our new TriStar and place it on. This particular one is actually a little bit different version. It's the updated 610A3B, um, which is a little more universal with more devices. So we actually carry that in store uh, for, uh, for use on multiple, on multiple devices. So there we go. We line it up just like that. So now we're going to bring our hot air in once again. And we're going to solder this one back into place. So after a second, you're going to be able to see that the TriStar settles in and um, is completely soldered at this point. You want to let it sit for just a moment to allow the joints to cool down and to solidify. Now, you never want to do any kind of cleaning if the board is still extremely hot, um, but it can be slightly warm and that'll be fine. Uh, so we're going to go through here. We're going to clean off a little bit of this little adhesive at the top that burned and then also just underneath with our little Q-tip that has isopropyl alcohol on it. And so one last thing to do, we need to bend this back down so that it doesn't stick up inside the board. I always use the back end of my tweezers and you can just push it down just like that. I mean, it's always gonna have a very slight bend to it, but this allows it to bend down and uh, not cause any kind of interference being in that particular position there. Um, you can go ahead and take Now you can go ahead and take a little bit of canned air as well. And blow off the board. And that there should be sufficient. And now we're going to take this one right back over to our other workbench and install it back in the housing and do our test one more time. So now that we've performed the solder repair on this particular logic board, we're going to insert it back in the housing and test it once again. We should get much better results, or at least I hope so, as long as the repair was done well and as long as that was the actual issue with the device. But seeing that we tested with a multimeter and with our SmartMod Pro and we got poor results with each, um, I would assume and suspect that the TriStar was fully at fault. I'm gonna go ahead and plug this in as well as the battery. We're gonna run our SmartMod Pro tests if you remember before, it took right about two to three minutes for the test to actually run. Hopefully in this particular test, it should go a little bit quicker. So went ahead and pressed our quick test. It's going through the test right now and it's going to be reading all the different lines. And like I mentioned before, this is a really cool test because basically what it does is it reads each line in the charge port and then compares those with known goods and then gives you a pass or fail. Extremely awesome device and I highly recommend it. And so this one is actually done. It literally took less than a minute to do and it gave us a full pass. So if we click more, we can see that all of these passed and that none of them say fail. And now if we go ahead and unplug it and we plug in our um, charge port and unplug our battery, we're able to check at the battery FPC with a multimeter to see what kind of results we get. And like I mentioned before, we should get much more than half a volt that we got earlier. So testing it, we can see that we're getting right at 3.7 volts, um, which that is extremely awesome and the perfect results that we want to get. 
And so between both of these, I would definitely say that this TriStar is fully repaired. However, there's one last test that you need to do. I'm gonna go and plug this one in and test it with the screen assembled and use a USB ammeter to test the amount of amperage going into the port itself. Now that we got the device back on the screen and the battery is plugged in, we're gonna to attempt to turn it on, which I don't know if it has enough battery life to even power on. So what we'll do now is we do want to go ahead and take one of our USB ammeters and we can test what the charge port is actually pulling. Uh, this is a pretty cool one. It, uh, it can actually, has a couple different screens on it. I do have this one linked up in the description below. It's a great five volt um, USB ammeter. So plugging it in, we can see that we're getting right at, um, right about 0.2 which um, we are getting the, um, the charging indicator on the screen itself. And now that it's actually sat for a second, it's sitting at 0.8, which is right about the normal amount for this particular device in order to power on. Now all that's left to do is to leave it on the charger to allow it to charge up enough to power on. So we're gonna leave it for a few minutes and we're gonna come right back to it. And then we're gonna do a little bit more testing at that point. All right, and now that the device is actually powered up, we can then test with our USB ammeter to see if it's pulling the appropriate amperage. Um, this is a pretty cool um, am ammeter, like I mentioned before. It'll give you the volts, also give you the amperage, and then you can toggle through a couple different screens. I linked it up in the description below, so you can pick one of these up. This multimeter is a five volt ammeter, so it's definitely really nice to be able to use for phones and tablets, uh, basically anything that uses a standard wall charger. Um, so this one is all booted up now, and it looks like it's all working um, as far as our charge rates go. So let me get back over to that screen. We're pulling right about an amp and right at five volts. So that is absolutely perfect, especially considering that the battery is pretty dead at this point. We just still need to do the final assembly on it. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, assemble everything up. But as far as this particular device, all we have to do is just assemble it and test it and give it back to the customer. But it looks like our charging issue is completely resolved. I appreciate everyone that's still watching. And if you like this video, go ahead and hit the like button and subscribe to our channel. And please comment below what you'd like to see in future videos. And as well, everything on my workbench is linked up in the description below. And if you like this particular training and you would like us to personally teach you and your repair shop how to better your workflows and to increase your knowledge on repairs like micro soldering, check out the link in the description below. We have a fully online mentored repair course where we teach you all about soldering and all about how to increase and better your workflows in your store to not only just turn more screwdrivers, but to turn more profit. That is our ultimate goal with starting ProFixer. And so if you check out the link in the description below, you can learn more about how we can guide you through this mentored process through our online courses. And I would love to take you through that whole process and see a repair shop transformation for you. But once again, my name is Ben from ProFixer and I'll see you in the next video.